Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master in the word of God. Thank you for joining me again as we continue the theme we began on Monday, and that is what to remember when you don't like yourself. Amen. And uh, we, we talked about the ugly duckling, right, who was really a beautiful swan, but because the it was around ducks and because it was different, the ugly duckling that was a beautiful swan began to believe people's misinterpretation of who the swan was, believed it. And if you have a misunderstanding of who you are, then you will misunderstand what you can do, what God's purposes and plans for your life is. If it's called not liking yourself. Can you love anybody else if you don't love yourself? Can you help someone else if you don't first have the feeling that you should help yourself? So that's what we're talking about this week. And Paul addresses this issue in the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 12, verses three through six, which is our primary scripture, Paul says several things that I want you to remember about yourself. First of all, Paul says, don't misinterpret yourself. He's gonna say that. Let's see if we, if we can find that. It says, I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me. And especially as I have responsibilities and relations to you, living then as every one of you does in pure grace, it's important that you not misinterpret yourself. And that's the first thing that Paul is telling us. Don't misinterpret yourself. Don't let people tell you that you're the ugly duckling when you're not, you're a swan. They, most folk don't know who you are. And so how can you depend on someone else who is ignorant? Someone else past our presence interpretation of who you are to define you. Don't let anyone define you because anyone you let define you will limit you. And it's absolutely insane for you to determine or assess who you are by what you're, you know your enemies are saying. Don't determine who you are based on your haters, what your haters and your enemies are saying. Forget them. All right. So he says, first of all, you see that in the word, don't misinterpret who you are. Secondly, in this passage, Paul says that you are somebody because God gives you value. God gives you value. Notice it's, it's important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and what God what he does for us. God has done something for you that basically gives you value. Amen. Um, if, if let's say the richest person in the world says, I want you to come over and I want you to do something for you, then you will be, everybody in the world will know who you are. It doesn't matter uh, how inconsequential you may be in society. All of a sudden you're the talk of the town. Why? Because the person who has the power has given you value by, by bringing you or, or inviting you to their place and giving you certain resources. And this is saying that the God of the universe has done something for you, died for you, and because God has died for you, that gives you value. The third thing this thing, this teaching says, Paul is saying, first, don't misinterpret yourself. Two, God gives you value. And three, you have value because of what God says and does for you. He says again, the only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what, what he does for us, not what we do for him. Many times, because we're not living by grace, but by works and merit and not mercy, we think we have to earn our way to God. And many times we go through life trying to earn people's acceptance. And then once we get certain things right, they pull the goalpost back. And then when we get and they say, you only got five more yards. And if you do, if you do, if you just gain five more yards, then you will be accepted. And then you gain those five yards and they pull the goalpost back 10 yards. And then you say, oh, if you just get 10 more yards, you'll get the touchdown. Then when you work hard to get those 10 yards, then they pull the goalpost back. And they keep putting the goalposts back and we fall into their trap of working hard to get someone else's approval. 
this passage says you don't have to get work to get God's approval. He gives you approval by his grace. He says, again, the only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us, not for what and for, for what we are and what we do for him. God loves you not because of what you do for him. God loves you because God loves you. So don't misinterpret yourself. God gives you value. You have value not because of what you do, but because of what God has done for you. And then finally, he is saying here, be what God has made you to be. Once you know that, be you. Who gives a hoot what other people think? Look at verse four. Preach Kevin Wayne Cosby. In this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. In other words, the hand, be the hand. Foot, be the foot. Ear, be the ear. Nose, don't be jealous of the hand. You got a role to play. Everybody has a role to play. Play your role. Be the best person you can be. Amen. Now, notice that this is in the word of God. Notice that anytime a, you're going to sell a car, you always evaluate the car on based on what the blue book says. There's something called a blue book. And the blue book has, if you look in the blue book and, and you determine what the year of the car is, the make of the car is, is and how much mileage it has, and the house on the car, then you can assess what the car's value is. So if you go to a dealer and the dealer says, I want to give you a, a $2,000, when the blue book says you it's worth $3,000, then you stand your ground and you tell the dealer, no, the blue book says it's worth $3,000. And that's what I demand based on the blue book. The Bible is your blue book. And the Bible says you are made in the image of God. So since the Bible says you are made in the image of God, don't misinterpret to yourself. Know that you have value. Know that God gives you value and you don't have to do anything to earn the value of God. God gives you value by the grace of God and be what God calls for you to be. One last thing I want to say to you, and that is there are two traps that we tend to fall in, and it's right there in Romans chapter 12. But I want you to look at the New International ver Version. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 says this, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think more highly than you ought. Now, there are two traps that we can fall into. Trap number one is to think more highly of ourselves. And that's what he talks about in the first part of this verse. But there's an other equal trap. And that is, first of all, the trap of, of thinking more highly of yourself. And then the second trap is the trap of thinking more lonely of yourself. Don't think more highly of yourself, like you're better than others, but don't think more lonely of yourself than you're less than others. Then if I don't think more highly or more lowly, think more biblically of yourself. And when you think more biblically of yourself, you know that you are made in the image of God with tremendous possibilities, not simply evil perversities. So my brothers and my sisters, please don't misinterpret yourself. And remember, your blue book is not your ex-teachers. Your blue book is not your ex, your, your, your parents, your siblings, your ex-husband or your ex-wife or the employees on your job. They are not your blue book. Do not give people that kind of power over your life. If somebody said to you, let me have your keys, I'd like to take your car. And you say, why do you want to take my car? Because I want to take your car and I'm going to run it into a wall. Would you give them the keys to your car? No. Well, if, if you would not give your keys to the car, who, who to somebody who wants to wreck your car, why would you give the keys to your emotions to somebody who you know wants to wreck your emotions? In other words, take your keys back and keep them in your pocket or your purse. Uh, because the blue book, my Bible says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. You're not an ugly duckling, baby. You are the beautiful swan. They just don't know who you are. And it doesn't matter what they know or don't know. It's a matter, what it matters is what you know about yourself. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be healed from every misinterpretation that you have internalized about yourself, that you will be set free to know that when God made you, God was not guilty of creative malfeasance, that you are not a mistake. You are made in the image of God. So go ahead, swan, and with your bad self.
and see who God has truly made you to be. Let's pray together. Lord, our God, we thank you for your word and help us not just to hear it with our ears, but to embrace it in our hearts. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. This is Wednesday night Bible study. I hope you join us tonight for Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, it actually begins at 630 with Sister Crystal Goodner. Uh, with the pre-worship experience, and then we begin worship at seven o'clock. I hope that you will join us tonight. Peace and blessings. Pass this uh, message on to somebody else because you know somebody who doesn't like themselves, and, and uh, be a good ev a messenger and evangelist and share the word with someone else. But more, more importantly, you make sure that you internalize it yourself. We'll pick up on this again tomorrow, but until then, don't forget during this surge of the coronavirus, this Delta variant. Don't forget to stay safe and stay sane. And by all means, please get vaccinated. We'll pick up on this again tomorrow. Peace and blessings.